What's up, everybody? Hold on one second. We have a little technical difficulty. Get us added to the stream here. Sorry, David. Hold on one second. All good. Add to stream. Add to stream. First time I've had this one. Hold on. Technology will throw you a curveball every once in a oh, while. Oh, yeah. All this good stuff we want to get to. Give me one second. Okay. All right. Background. There we are. I'm just going to get rid of the background. So, all right, guys, we are live, and I'm really excited today. I have an expert mortgage professional in our vendor corner. I'm Jacob Barnhill with the Barnhill team at EXP Realty, and I like to highlight every so often a professional in the business of real estate that you should know, whether it be a house cleaner, a contractor, or in this case, a mortgage lender uh, and branch manager. And David today is going to talk to us about the mortgage industry. What are we seeing today? What are some things that we should know as we're all pivoting, whether we're an agent or a consumer in the marketplace? And David's going to pierce through some of the myths that we're seeing out there and a lot of other good nuggets. Uh, David Kane, everybody. David, why don't we start with a little bit of your backstory and what got you into the crazy world of mortgage lending and real estate in the first place? Yeah, great question. But first and foremost, thank you so much for having me on your uh, your video, uh, Jacob. I really, really appreciate the opportunity. But um, yeah, my history and the way I got into it is pretty funny, actually. I Coming out of college, I actually got into the sports agent business and was a sports agent for several years, worked for another agent, and uh, came back to Columbia to open up my own firm. And um, it's, uh, it's a very, the sales cycle is very slow. So you start recruiting somebody, you know, in the summer of their senior year, they end up uh, signing, uh, potentially getting drafted, and they don't get their first paycheck until they make their team in the the following fall and so it's a full year's worth of work before you even get a paycheck so when i came back uh to columbia to open my new firm uh, i had a bunch of buddies in the mortgage business and so they said hey come over and work with us while uh you kind of get your uh, business up and running and uh here i am 24 years later in the business and not in the agent business so that's kind of how it all started Cool, man. So 24 years. And I didn't know you were doing uh, uh, you were in the sports industry before. I almost did the same thing with uh, sports medicine. So that's really cool, man. Um, so when you first got in 24 years ago, so th that was uh, late 90s. Early yeah. 2000s. So I'm old. I'm I'm sure. And and I've seen I've seen a lot of stuff going around and I had the chart pulled up and I know interest rates is a big topic right now in the in the mortgage space and people looking to buy a home and they've seen these rates go up and these look crazy, uh, especially if you weren't in real estate, whether you be you, you're being the agent or the mortgage professional or the consumer. These rates probably look ridiculous. What did it look like when you started? What was the market like in the early 2000s when you first got started? Yeah, so the rates back then, they got up into the sevens. Um, obviously, back in the 80s, they were all the way up in the high teens, which is insane. But, um, you know, when I was in the business at, at the beginning, it was in the upper sixes, low sevens. And um, so we're close to that right now, but not quite there. But, um, yeah, there's definitely a lot of fear around rates. And um, so I'm glad we're going to have this conversation and hopefully kind of reframe uh, the whole thought process on rates. So you've seen quite a, a few markets, too, and I'm sure you see a lot of uh, the same kind of fear. And I think there's always an element of fear, whether the market's up or down or interest rates. No, there's never I don't I think everyone can probably agree there's never this perfect, perfect time. Uh, to, to buy a home. But obviously, we don't want to wait every 20 years right. to be 
buying and selling real estate, right? So yeah. I know there's a lot of fear around rates going up and things like that. Um, kind of give us your uh, opinion and, and what you're seeing from, you know, I'm sure you look at the market and you're studying why this is going on, but kind of give us the David Kane version. What are we really seeing right now? What's happening? Why are rates going up? And what are some things that we need to kind of be aware of and be clear about and, and not be listening to the noise, as I like to call it? Yeah, it's a great question. So as I mentioned earlier, there's lots of fear out there. People are really worried about rates. And that's really because they're looking at the comparison of where they were two years ago, one year ago. Um, if you look at the big picture and over time, you know, a rate is actually the rate right now in the fives and low sixes is actually a great rate. Uh, it's just we've been spoiled the last couple of years. So um, that would be number one is just make sure you understand, you know, perspective. Yes, it's very different from the last couple of years, but it's still a great rate. And number two, what I tell people is, is obviously the economy and there's a lot of crazy things going on in the market. And um, although the, the experts, so-called, have been wrong many times over the last couple of years, but many of them now are predicting that we are going to go into some type of recession uh, in some form or some fashion, some size. And after every recession in the history of the United States, there has always been a rate drop or a rate decrease. And so what I'm telling my clients is that, you know, if that is the case, you know, this isn't a 30 year mortgage you're getting. This is more like a two or three year mortgage. And then you will be able to refinance, go into a lower rate and still be able to take advantage of all the appreciation that's probably still going to be happening over the next couple of years. That's a great point. That, that actually nails my next question. And I was going to ask if, I, if I'm financially able and I want to buy right now and I wanted to wait it out, should I? It is, is there any reason why I would want to wait before making the initial purchase? Yeah. I, I mean, I look at a lot of data and, and read a lot and it's looking like appreciation is still going to continue to happen, maybe at a slower pace, uh, five to 10 percent, maybe instead of the 15, 20, 25 we've been seeing. So if you do decide to wait, you know, next year for the exact same house, you could be paying another 20 grand. Um, and, you know, if you are if there is going to be a rate decrease, which there will be at some point, then you've missed out on all that appreciation. So. I still think it's a great time. It's also the last four, I believe, consecutive months. There's been more inventory on the market than the previous month. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be easier and easier for first time home buyers. There'll be less competition. So I would not recommend waiting. Um, and on the flip side of that, they're projecting that rents are going to continue to increase. So if you do decide to wait, and your rent goes up and the house prices go up, you've lost two times. Yeah, that's a really great point, man. So what you're saying is there's still this opportunity to refinance. There is, and what we're seeing on the real estate side, uh, you know, as agents, that there is this future appreciation. I think sometimes we get confused on possibly this market crashing and prices going down, right? And then we can, I think we could possibly make the excuse that, well, I don't want to buy a house when prices are going down. So that goes back to my my point. You know, you're you could always find a reason not to buy. Uh, but I think we could be waiting a long time if we're waiting for all the variables. And it's always about I, I mean, I work with a lot of investors, too. It's about playing the cards. If, you, if you're ready and you're willing and you're able and you want to do this, it's about playing your cards the best way you can. In my opinion, would you agree yeah. with that? Absolutely. And um, I, I think that waiting is is just going to cause more pain and i think there is a lot of misconception um that what we're headed to is going to be similar to 2008 2009 right and i think the the kind of the dynamics are very very different from that time frame so the loans that have been given out are very different the credit scores are very different the people buying the houses are very different so there's not going to be a huge drop off in uh, demand and uh, the types of loans that have been given out over the last few years 
are more quality. So I think it's really goes back to supply and demand. I think that even though rates are going up and home prices are going up, there's still going to be demand, which is going to prevent any type of huge drop in uh, home prices. Got it. Well, it's a good segue into my my next question. If, let's say that I am ready. I got some I got some cash. I'm ready for a down payment, uh, you know, or just some move in money. Right. I'm ready to buy a house. What are some things? Well, let's go back up even further. When should I when should I reach out to you? When do I need to talk to a mortgage professional before I'm ready to buy? Well, I think it really depends on the individual situation. If you are someone that you know what the credit score is, your credit score is, and it's a it's a great score, you know, I would say at least 60 days prior to wanting to be in the house, uh, maybe as much as 90. If you don't know your score and you think there's a chance it's lower, maybe low 600s, upper 500s, I would start the process at least, you know, six months prior to wanting to be in a house because you'll definitely have some work to do, especially if you're in the that 500 category. And um, we'd want to put together a, a very concise plan to right. get the score where you need to be so that you can buy at that time frame. Perfect. Yeah, that validates me, man. Thanks. I, I'm always <laughs> telling everybody six months because, yeah. you know, it's it'd be bad if we were working on things when you're really, really ready and you need to be in a home. And we could have been working on stuff the last six months. But let's say I'm, I'm throwing you some some easy ones, man, because I know these I talk to a lot of people all the time that have these common concerns. But what I've been working on my credit, David, and, you know, I'm I, I really am worried about getting that hard pull on my credit and I'm just not ready yet even though I can yeah. probably get some good advice by having an early conversation, what would you say? Yeah. Um, I am very glad you asked that question because I talked to lots of people that say, Oh, I don't want the hard inquiry. Well, the information and knowledge you're going to get is going to far exceed any drop in credit score. And most likely there isn't going to be a drop in score. So that's a huge misconception is that, a credit poll is going to cost you 40, 50 points. That's just simply not true. Um, and a lot of times people think that they're doing things that are going to improve their scores and it's actually hurting them. So you need a professional that knows how to look and evaluate, look at and evaluate credit and give you a specific plan that we know will improve the scores. So, don't go it alone. Make sure you talk to a professional. Yeah, absolutely, man. I always tell people they're not on an island, right? They got all yeah. these guys and we're not either one of us aren't getting paid till we get to the closing table. So it's pretty right. much free advice in the in the meantime. But those are great points. A lot of things, you know, there's many like this example, but I see some people, they, they'll close down credit cards. What happens when that something like that happens? They pay off their credit cards. They're like, whew, mm -hmm. I got rid of that debt. And now I've closed down my credit cards and I'm, I'm anti-credit card now. I don't want any more anything to do with credit cards. Huge mistake. There? Huge yeah. mistake. That score is going to drop. You think you're doing something that's going to really help you. But, you know, credit cards are actually one of the best ways to improve your scores. And so um, people that have lower scores, that's one of the things I tell them, hey, let's get you a secured credit card. That's going to improve your scores the quickest. So uh, that's a prime example of what people do that think is going to help their scores. But in the end, it's really hurting them. So yeah. definitely talk to a local professional. I know. And this is a lot of basics. And there's many other examples I, I have that are like that, that I know it's, that's why it's in, you have an advantage talking to somebody that moves a lot of transactions like this and, and works with a lot of people in their individual situations. How many, roughly, how many, how many uh, homes are you guys closing on every single month? What are you guys normally working with? You know, it varies depending on the market, but you know, me and my team, we pretty much close anywhere from, I would say 12 to 25 a month, uh, somewhere in that range. That's awesome, man. So those are a lot of examples. I mean, consistently doing that, I'm sure, and doing this for 24 years, you've probably seen a lot of a lot of things that people have messed up and, and, a, and a lot of things that you've probably gotten into and learned and, and can creatively help people uh, with their specific situation. But 
what are you seeing most commonly where people are uh, obviously other than the credit card example, of course, but what else are you seeing most commonly where people are kind of stepping that they shouldn't or things you wish, man, they, they got there, but we could have really helped them out if we wouldn't have had this when we started. What is that normally that you see with consumers? Well, it's a couple things. One, collections. Um, sometimes paying off collections will help the score. Sometimes it'll actually hurt the score. It just depends on, you know, the type of collection, how long they've had it, when it's mm -hmm. reporting. So that's one misconception. It may or may not help you and could hurt you. That's number one. Um, number two, uh, just saving money. Because if you have your own money for down payment, it gives you a higher likelihood to get approved with a lower score. So more assets, you know, whether it's a 401k uh, or just simply putting money in savings, you know, not budgeting, therefore they're not prepared either from maxed out cards or don't have a down payment causing the scores to drop. So I would say number one is collections and what to do and when to do it. And, um, and then number two would just be savings and assets, having those to uh, help strengthen the overall credit profile. What about even if I'm going to go 100%, you know, I'm going to go VA or I'm going to do a USDA loan, I'm going to have uh, no down payment. What's normally, what do you recommend to someone? What, what should they have in the bank? Because they're still going to be moving costs and, you know, it's still going to be closing costs. What do you normally recommend someone has on hand? Well, that's also kind of a, a big misconception. A lot of people out there think that, especially millennials, think you need 20% down to buy a house. And that's just simply not accurate. You yeah. can get in with a lot less than most people think. Um, so, and the person with the 780 score, that's a different amount than the person with the 580 score. So the plan is going to be different, but normally you want to at least have the down payment, the closing cost, and two or three months worth of mortgage payments still in savings after you close on the loan and buy the house. Now, if you don't have that, then that's not a showstopper. You still have the ability to buy a house, but that's, you know, in an ideal world, that's what you'd like to have. Cool. And now, you know, I know you guys are looking at a lot of things uh, when you're when you're looking at uh, qualification status. Talk to me about some of the misconceptions around uh, credit scores. I know a lot of people I've seen. I'm sure you've seen the credits. People come to you and thinking that they have a much higher credit score than what you guys actually use. Dispel some myths around a credit score and what people really need to be looking at as they start trying to get a clear target for their purchasing power. Yeah, so a lot of people, they kind of monitor their credit online, whether it's through Credit Karma or, you know, like an Equifax account. Um, first and foremost, those are not accurate. It's a good guide to really know what's on your credit and a general idea of what your score is. But most of the times I see those online scoring modules are essentially, you know, somewhere between 20 and 50 points higher than the actual score. Um, so that's number one to make sure you're aware of is they're not accurate. Uh, the actual score is probably going to be lower than what you're seeing. Uh, so that'd be number one. Number two, um, you know, if you're a first time home buyer, there's lots of programs that are available in the low 600s. If you have assets, there's even options in the upper 500s. So um, credit scores, they're a lot more lenient than they used to be. And um, but yeah, always talk to someone. Don't assume anything. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There totally is. And a lot of times I feel like that's half our job is kind of helping people with maybe some of the misinformation that they've had. But give me your opinion. What do you think about some of the or let, let me ask it this way. What if I need credit help? Maybe I want to improve my credit or maybe maybe I already have good credit. And I just want to improve upon that further to get the best possible situation for my purchase. What would you recommend? Well, a couple of things. Number one, um, obviously, it starts with making your payments on time. You really need to make sure you don't miss any payments um, on any accounts. That's number one. Number two, always keep your credit card balances down at least 30% or less of the um, credit limit. 
That'd be number two. And then number three, um, stay away from the finance companies because they're considered higher risk. Um, the rates are significantly higher. It puts you behind and it's harder to um, actually just get ahead in your financial situation and save money. So those would be probably the three things that um, I would make sure people are aware of. And when you say finance companies, so people know that maybe aren't 100% clear what you mean. What do you, what do you actually mean there? So we're clear for everybody. Yeah, there are different kind of like local shops and chains that uh, you can go in payday kind of type lenders where you yep. can go in and get a thousand bucks or they'll send you a check for two grand, but the rate on it's 25%. Um, right. Those are the types. I don't want to name any, but no, sure. uh, there's a bunch of them out there. And I see a lot of people with lower credit scores. They have those accounts and I'm like, please, number one, let's, let's get that paid off. Let's close it out yep. and don't ever step foot in there again. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Um, so what about, what about credit repair companies? There's a lot of credit repair companies out there. Would you recommend not naming any names again, but do you recommend those companies if I truly need some help? I typically don't. Um, yeah, I understand there are some out there that are, you know, are pretty good, but the vast majority of the ones that I've seen don't really help. Uh, they pretty much dispute every account. And then the scores artificially go up and everybody thinks, oh, they're miracle workers. But as soon as the loan goes to underwriting, they're going to want all those disputes removed. And guess what happens? That score goes all the way back down to where it was. So I typically don't do that I, uh, or don't recommend that. What I do is just give them the basics. Number one, make sure you can go at least six months without missing any payment um, preferably 12 or more. And then number two, let's look at the types of credit that you have because that matters. And, um, and those are the basics. And if they do the basics, they're going to get there on their own. Yeah. Again, this is why I recommend these. Everyone reaches out to a mortgage professional like David six months ahead of time, just to get the game plan. Let's get a clearer target. Even if we've done this before, it might be a different situation. Uh, if we're trying to get the best rate, it costs you nothing for a conversation. Right. And it's really good to strategize. I mean, investors, I work with a lot of investors again, David, and we talk to our mortgage people all the time. We're strategizing with them. We want to know about their products. Are they willing to do this? Obviously, investors are always buying, right? They're looking mm -hmm. at stuff, but they want to strategize to, to look at what, what can we do here? What's the best possible outcome? What do I need to do now? What do you, what do you need next? You know what I mean? And this is a very active thing for them to try to always get the best rate, which is a, a big variable in them making a profit on, on a, on a transaction. Right. So I think consumers can learn something from that aspect and reaching out, having a, a, a mortgage professional in their pocket that can really strategize for their given situation well ahead of them making the purchase. So I know you guys have a lot of different products that I want you to share with us. Uh, obviously you guys have first, uh, first time home buyer, uh, programs, VA, uh, FHA, conventional products, but what are some things that people may not know of? And I know you got some newer stuff as well. Talk to us about those. Yeah. So we have all the basic programs, um, that anybody needs and we have the down payment assistance programs. Um, what we have two new products and programs that are going to be really beneficial. Number one, it's of course you have to qualify and there are certain conditions that do apply, but um, it is a product for conventional buyers that um, are kind of worried or uh, stressed about interest rates. And um, the rate is actually about three quarters of a percent lower than the standard or going rate. So that is a huge, huge product. Um, for people right now that uh, maybe are trying to back out because they're worried about rates. And um, the second one is, you know, over the last pretty much year, there's been a huge uh, competition battle, whatever you want to call it for, uh, for listing. So you might have 10, 15, 20 offers 
on every single property. Now that is slowing down a little bit, but we have a program that is uh, allows both people that uh, qualify for VA loans and conventional loans to basically put in a cash offer and eliminate the financing contingency so that they are able to essentially beat out two thirds of the other offers that are out there. Um, and VA buyers have had their one of the most, uh, they've had the most challenging time over the last year yeah. getting offers accepted. Well, this puts them in a position where they can compete with yeah. just about anybody. So those uh, are the products that are brand new that uh, really can help people in today's market. I love that one too. And I want to highlight the fact that being a veteran myself, I think the VA loan is a great product. Uh, there's a lot of other companies out there specifically for these cash type offers that charge a fee. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you guys don't charge an extra fee for using that product through your company. Is that correct? For VA um, loans, that, that is zero, yes. zero fees. Um, yeah. Conventional, it's uh, one point. And then at closing, we give half a point back to the client. That's so um, that's, that's, that's the best in the market. Nobody's close. That's really cool, man. So um, just kind of a side conversation. Let's say I'm really trying to strategize. Maybe I'm really kind of freaked out about these interest rates still. I'm trying to strategize. Maybe I'm thinking about reaching out to you and I'm just trying to figure out like, how can I, how can, what's the creative way I can kind of beat this, these interest rates and, and uh, you know, not have to pay so much interest over the life of the loan. You've already shared one strategy where you could refinance with the likely drop we're going to see. What would you say to someone that's like, what if what if I wanted to do a 15 year uh, payment? My payment's going to go up, but I'm paying less in interest over the life of the loan. What would you recommend to someone wanting to do something like that? Yeah, I mean, that will definitely reduce the interest as long as you can afford the payment. Um, that is a great way to beat it. Arms are available, but the secondary market's not really rewarding arms with um, better pricing mainly because I think they know that their the rates are going to drop in the near future. So there's no real reward for the secondary market to um, offer better pricing. But I also like to tell people, you know, look at what the difference is. Let's say your rates five and a half, you know, what is the real payment difference between five and a half and four? at the price point that you're looking at, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks. So right. if you're looking at the big picture, you know, if it's a couple hundred bucks, that's, you know, $2,400 a year. If you hold it for three years, you know, that's less than $7,500 mm -hmm. that it's going to cost you, but yet the appreciation still there. You're still a homeowner. And so if you could put away 7,500 extra dollars to the side, then you've got you've got the margin there. You've got the extra money to handle the rate until they do drop. And so that's kind of what I'm telling people as well. Let's look at the big picture. How much is it really extra? Where could you cut 200 bucks a month and not really feel the higher rate? Cool. Yeah, there's so many other benefits that getting into home ownership versus renting all these things. You guys have all these products uh and different options and all the experience the other good, great thing i love about you and your team is that you actually have a team i'm pro team we have a team i think that you know having specializations it affords better service to the client talk to us a little bit about your team and uh once we got somebody onboarded and working with you guys what's that what's that look like it's not just you behind the curtain here we've got a whole slew of people talk to us about your people yeah. So I've got, you know, the team kind of, um, I'm constantly working to improve processes and systems that help my clients have what I believe is going to be the best mortgage experience in the industry. So, uh, I have someone on the front end that helps collecting documents, people in the back end that are helping people get to the finish line after it's been through underwriting. Uh, but every single client that I have, and referral partner that I work with, the only number I give out is this number, cell phone. 
So they can call me, text me anytime they're able to reach me, get questions answered. And so it all begins and ends with the client experience. And so the only way to help more people is to have more people help them. And so that's why I have a team because I want to have the ability to help others uh, become homeowners. And the only way to help more is to have more help. So that's why I have a team and uh, we are always laser focused on the client experience. So um, that's the benefit of a team. That's why I have a team and it all begins and ends with the client. Cool, man. So one, as we're wrapping up, what's the one thing you just want to scream from the mountaintops? You just want everybody to know about the market, your team, doesn't matter. What, what is it you want to share with everyone? You just really want them to know about the market right now or whatever. What do you got? What do we need to know? Boy, that's broad there. Uh, but what, do you, what have say, you been saying most recently? Like you're just trying to get through on people. What is that thing? I want to know that nugget from David. What is it? Well, there's a lot. Uh, but I would say, <laughs> you know, when you are looking to buy a house, make sure you start with the right people on your team. So um, I have, I mean, there's lots of online resources and online companies. Um there's lots of competition out there, but first and foremost, you want to find someone that is working for you, that is a consultant for you, that's going to educate, it's going to provide wisdom, that's going to make the process simpler and smoother. So um, always it starts with the right team uh, and the right person, because if you don't have the right person, it's going to be a bad, bad experience. So that would probably be the 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 best thing, um, the best piece of advice I could give people is make sure you are doing your research on the individual uh, that you're going to be working with, both from real estate side, from the mortgage side, um, just to make sure you get the best product, the best program, the best experience, and, um, and you're communicated to properly. Cool, man. Yep. It's all about trust and communication. And I know David Kane and his team have got that, man. David, that pretty much wraps us up, man. I really appreciate you spending your time with us and sharing your wisdom and your thoughts on everything. Anything else before we wrap up that you want to share or do we cover it all? That, that's it. I certainly appreciate the opportunity and um, just to have this conversation with you and, and your team and everybody listening. Um, it's, uh, you know, I'm in this business to serve others. And so I appreciate the opportunity to get the message out and to help people get accurate information and know that there are people that um, can be on their side, that are on their side, and they're here to serve them. Cool. Well, thanks so much, man. I really appreciate it. I know I'm going to have a lot of my newer agents watch this video. Uh, this is going to go out on our website as well. So if people want to get the recording, you can go check it on our social page. Uh, we're going to have it everywhere. David's information is at the bottom here. You can reach out to him. That's his cell phone number, by the way. Like he just told us right there, you're going to get David. Uh, or you can go ahead and start the application process at his uh, website, canemortgageteam.com. Thanks again, David. I really appreciate your time. Jacob, thanks again. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Bye, everybody. Thanks, David. Take care.